Welcome, I am Daisy, your hostess, and you are in my tarot playlist. In this video, we will be doing a comprehensive collective reading for the week of November 21 through the 27th. That's Monday, November 21, all the way through Sunday the 27th. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, and to our fortune community, welcome back. All right. Hopefully you have been enjoying all the goodies on the channel. I know it's kind of eclectic where I have books. If you haven't had a chance, check out my book playlist. And then there's my nature playlist where it's all about nature that I love. There'll be a compilation of goodies. We will start with the lunar influence. Where is the moon during each day of the week? And what is the influence as it goes through the different constellations? Then we will do a one card draw for each day of the week. So we will do that seven day forecast followed by the angels and demons. Yes, pleasures and temptations. What's going to be the pleasures and things that we can focus on or what might be the temptations that we may need to be careful of? All right. And then that is followed by the elements of the zodiac so we will try and get everyone that's why it's called the collective and if you are interested in a personal private reading with me please do look at the description and you can go ahead and set that appointment up and with the elements of the week we will cover our fire signs our water signs our earth signs and our air signs so we will try and get you all in there i got myself in there too right okay and then that is followed by the number influence, the numerology influence. I will draw one number and see what the vibration will be affecting us during the week. And then we have the subscribers community question of the week. So it is brought by you and of you. So if you are interested in having a mini reading here on the channel, please do submit your question here on this post and I will try to grab it for the next section. So I'll do a mini reading to one of your questions. And we conclude that with a meditation and affirmation. So it's a one minute meditation where we come into our space, we block out the world and say, hey, 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 don't push into my wall, you know? It's my time, one minute. I can give myself a minute. Can you give yourself a minute? Come on, let's give each other a minute together where we focus on our breath and we come into our space, our sacred space, and we feel that. And then we wrap it up with an affirmation for the week. You can carry it with you for the week. Say it in the morning, say it at night, own it if you want. Hopefully it'll give you some power tools so you can get through whatever is ahead of you. So are you ready? I'm excited. Let's move on. In this section, we will now take a look at the lunar influence of the week of Monday, November 21st through Sunday, November 27th. Many of us are fascinated by the moon. We look up at it when it's full and bright, and we look for it when it's dark and silent. And it is this transformation that goes on repeating a never ending cycle of waxing and waning, causing many of us to gaze up in wonder about our very own cycle and those subtle changes. So let's dive in, to see what influences we will have as the moon moves through the various constellations and specifically on Monday, November 21st, we see the moon moving in Libra still. There will be a subtle shift right about that 1700 hours where the moon will then jump into Scorpio. So for the most part of the morning on Monday, you will have that air energy of Libra, that sense of justice, that sense of balance. So you'll start your, your day with a lot of mental activity, a lot of things that you're focused on. And right about that early afternoon around five o'clock, there's going to be the shift from the mental Libra to the emotional Scorpion. 
So it seems that there will be a lot of things that will you'll have it together during your Monday and you'll be able to focus on a lot of things. It's just you have to be very careful as there is going to be what might feel like a flip in the switch later that afternoon. Definitely take advantage using this Libra influence that also is a cardinal sign will allow you to really get a few things started. This could be either with a business deal, a transaction, or in a relationship. There is a lot at play here that you can take advantage of. Okay, let's move on to Tuesday and Wednesday. The moon moves in later that evening, Monday, and through Tuesday and Wednesday, and passes through the constellation of Scorpio. So on Tuesday, November 22, I want to say happy birthday to my niece, Ariana. I love you very much. Lots of magical blessings to you. Expect in the next two days, a lot of what I would say mood, or it could just be moody moon. The moon in Scorpio, as well as going into its dark and solemn state of silence. Not quite a new moon, but on Tuesday, we're almost there. This moon is wonderful energy. If you are finding yourself that not only are you in a state of reflection and looking at things that are showing up in your life right now, but it is also like the sense that you need guidance so that you can work through some of the plans that you have in mind for the near future. So come Tuesday, just as this waning moon is preparing to go into its dark full stage, so too you might find yourself releasing things, letting go of things, not really worrying too much about the bigger issues. You're more focused on taking a back seat to any big decision. And so Probably that would be the right thing to do with anything that might show up for you on Tuesday and Wednesday is not to say yes to the dress because there are some things that can't be seen in the dark. And so be very careful with new transactions, new relationships, new people, or anything that may just not sit right with you. You don't have to say yes today. Expect this energy to follow through through Wednesday, November 23rd, as the new moon is in Scorpio. This new moon might have many of us asking things like, what do we want to achieve this coming month? What do we want to be a part of? What do we want to invest in? The influence of the new moon in Scorpio is bringing out these questions or emotions for us to focus on as we begin a new journey for the next 30 days. We don't have to plan too far. The new moon in Scorpio as that fixed sign is one that wants to get things done and so as we're planning these new goals, getting these new ideas and these new beginnings, what the emphasis will be is to put some deadlines to achieve these things, not just a random, let's get this started. No, let's get this going, but let's also set a deadline to it. Thursday and Friday, the moon now steps out of watery Scorpio and sets into fiery Sagittarius. This is portending to be favorable for many as a lot of big wins for you. This time on Thursday and Friday, the moon crossing past now the new moon stage and beginning to wax again, showing us the way and setting action, setting strategy, getting things done as that is such the influence of the Sagittarian mutable energy that is all about the catalyst for change, that it's completing things. So you see all these tasks that you started on Monday and others from 
recent past and you're looking at ways to complete them, to finalize them. A great way to end the weekend. The influence of the moon traveling through the constellation of Sagittarius is really about owning your life on your terms, which is also going to be affecting how the communication and if situations will be kind of unraveling on both Thursday and Friday, meaning that if it's not truth, if it's not sincere, this is not something you do not want to be a part of. So pay attention for anything that is going to be a fine print, a legal matter, pay attention to that. And in relationships, there might be a sense that you want a little elbow room you might feel like maybe your partner or that significant other or maybe those co-workers or bosses are kind of overbearing and over your shoulder and and you just really want a little wiggle room to just move around you don't want to feel smothered so thursday and friday there's going to be a lot going on when it comes to flow like ideas creativity and action. Then on Saturday, November 26th and Sunday, the moon moves into the constellation of earthy Capricorn. The influence of Capricorn will tend to be more of practicality, of level-headedness. Saturday and Sunday may find you focusing on creating your foundations, focusing on the things that you have promised and the things that you want to attract in your life. When it comes to your emotions, you're going to find yourself that this energy of the moon in Capricorn is helping you kind of hold space to the things that are important to you. You want to nourish them. You want to make them come true. There may be a sense that you don't want to go too far out this weekend. You feel like most of your activity are going to be around the home center and focusing on getting projects done at that level, or mostly probably you finding yourself working on yourself, on your body, on your mind, and kind of catching up on things that are on that deep grounding level. What is quite interesting is that the moon is beginning to wax, beginning to show more light. And so don't be surprised if you get this urge to sit down and just dream, to create your list, to set new goals, because that is a Capricorn influence. It is great energy for setting up goals for creating vision of things that you'd like to achieve and bring that all into focus and use that energy, use that opportunity because as the moon itself is waxing, you get to see a little bit more. You get to see things a little bit clearer and there is more light and more is being revealed. So I wouldn't be surprised if on Saturday and Sunday that you will get some news or some new information that will help you set the stage for something in the very near future. And there you have it. That is the lunar influence from Monday, November 21 through Sunday, November 27th. Let's move on to the next section. All right. In this section, we will be doing the seven day forecast for Monday, November 21 through Sunday, November 27. All right. Let's get the players out and see what they will reveal for us for the coming week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All right, let's look at Monday. Hmm, the Two of Wands. 
Okay, let's just take a look at this meaning as we start off our Monday. Looks like we're exploring something. We're open to looking at new opportunities. Could be something outside of our normal comfort zone. Definitely, we are waking up to looking at that. Maybe traveling, moving, relocating, new business, just expanding our horizon. And so we see this person here, a noble person, someone that is well off. It's not like they're struggling. So they're looking forward to expanding and they are of well means here. And we see their intentions, the purity here of the flowers. Uh, in general, we see a lot of positive things looking into the future, planning, goal setting, that kind of situation and mindset. And with the number two, looking at where it is, usually the number two is one of duty, one of service, one of balance and harmony, one of diplomacy. So here it's about partnerships as well and aligning ourselves with our divine life purpose and our mission. So what is the message here then as it relates to the card that is showing itself in the reverse? Obviously here, this Monday, we are feeling like we have no direction. We don't know where to go. And probably because we haven't sat down to, you know, set those goals, maybe those long-term goals, perhaps a plan. What is our plan? Things have happened and we haven't sat down to go back to that drawing board to look at where we started on this journey just a few months ago as we started the year. And now as we're heading towards the end of the year, we're like, where, where are we going? What's the plan? What's the purpose? And so there is a sense that you can't identify yourself with something to pursue. And here is this message coming through. Things may feel a little bit unbalanced. You might feel a little bit unsettled on this Monday, on this particular day. Things may show up that, you know, you can't move forward because of that lack of proper planning. So you may start off your day and realize that you're just kind of stumbling through the day, but you haven't planned out your day. And so basically everything and everybody else is creating its scenario and you're just like that bouncing ball in the middle. So what's important here is to look at that. Look at how you start your day. How do you start your day? Is it by accident? Is it by route? You know, like by memory? Is it by habit? And are these habits good habits? And if we now divide it into love, career, and romance, we look at our love situation. And maybe recently we've had a situation where there was, things were, weren't concrete. Things weren't finalized. Maybe this relationship is just windling itself away. And I've realized usually when the end of the year comes and when we're in the fall and heading towards the winter, a lot of people fall into that, like looking at their relationship about, is this thing going to continue? Is it going to move forward? Should we continue this? And you might be in a relationship where that question is really playing itself out. You know, maybe both the parties just realize that there is no further energy together and you can't begin to even imagine what that would look like. Or possibly in the career. Let's look at career with the two uh, wands upside down. Now it's like, where's your future? Where are you going? Is there mobility anywhere, sideways, upways? But you're not taking action. And it seems that in the career, there could be that you're at that place where you're not content. You're not being fulfilled. This is not really part of what you thought you would be when you got to this place, but this is where you're at. And then we look at money. Well, if you can't grab into the future, if you can't plan and organize, so there's a lack of financial planning, a, a lack of, you know, control regarding your money, your investments, your capital. Let's see November 22, Tuesday. So with the four of wands, we see what it appears to be celebration. Couple coming in here celebrating. We also see here these four posts decorated with a lot of bounty on it and abundance. We see people coming together. We see this big fortress or castle in the background and it just really evokes gathering. And so this could be a coming together as we see this reflected in the number four. The number four resonates with the vibration of organization, of patience, of what we call loyalty and trust, and also 
foundations. So we see this over here in this number as it's represented this. So when we also take a look at some of the other situations, it's like, and it's interesting because we are coming up in this month of gratitude. We celebrate Thanksgiving. So I wouldn't be surprised if many people started celebrating already. You kind of get that sense. And even when you go to work, it's like everything just feels a little lighter and everybody's kind of slowing down just a little bit. And so we've got this vibe about this of gathering, of getting together with family and friends, and just really focusing on what is good in the world. And this could be also very celebratory in the sense of a, of a wedding, of engagements, and possibly other social gathering settings that there may be. So there's a lot of that good vibe here. And with career and business and job, what we see here is collaboration. We see teamwork. We see colleagues getting together and supporting each other. There is a sense of unity in the mission here. Plus, this could also mean um, that there are office parties and gatherings work-related. When we see this financially, there is a sense of financial comfort here that you can take time and that there's funds to enjoy some of the better, sweeter things in life. Let's jump over to Wednesday. Okay, you know what's really interesting? when we take a look at this card. Here we had on Tuesday the number four, but then on Wednesday we have the number four again, and it's coming from this person. As, let's take a look at this card, the Emperor. Please do visit my Learn Tarot playlist and take a look at the video that I have on the Emperor. So here we have the Emperor appearing to be a man of passion, and this could be interpreted to be the ram, the ram is in the Aries sign. Aries is a fire sign. We see this red here, lots of passion. We see two pillars of mountains in the background, so that balance of earth, so there, that's being played out here. And we see the ankh here. We see that his whole crown is golden, and he's got the wisdom in his beard. And also, he has gone through some battles, so he is he knows how to handle you know all kinds of situations. And plus, he has the globe in his hand, the golden globe. The thing is, is that our emperor is upside down. So maybe something came up. Something may have been revealed. So when we see the emperor and we see all of what it represents and we see this grandness, what could this mean when it's upside down? Maybe this person or there's someone, come Wednesday, may over extend their authority. Maybe they're trying to be very possessive, overpowering a situation. This person might want to kind of step into your territory. And, and maybe on Wednesday, you might just feel like you can't um, do anything about it because this might be a boss or maybe it's in a relationship and it just might be too much. Maybe that's why we see some things here on Monday, looking forward, looking forward to, you know, travel, looking forward to a new relationship, looking forward to expand your territory. Maybe what we see on Monday has to do with some of this here. And maybe on a personal level, this could be that you are lacking some confidence, some self-control, and you're unable to handle certain situations and possibly the foundation that we see here isn't as strong as the one that we would like because this is pretty much made out of sticks but this foundation when it's right side up is made out of concrete and so maybe we're lacking some type of foundation and balance okay so so we do see that this here represents someone that is possibly afraid to lose control over what they have gained. So when we look at in the area of love, could this be that there's a power struggle in this relationship, whether it's business or intimate? In the area of career, is there a situation where you are um, having some issues at the work and you feel like they're pulling the rug out of you and where you thought that you were in for this promotion, uh, it was passed on to someone else, maybe because of the bureaucracy and the politics in the office, or maybe with your business partner, there's some power play and this is really putting some uncomfortable situation. 
And then when we look at the area of finances and money, this is upside down. It's like you can't get your hands, you can't grasp and hold on to the money fast enough. So it's you're unable to manage anything because it's just disappearing. And it's, so I would say definitely to consult with an accountant and get some help. Get some help. It's money. It's money well spent. Let's look at Thursday. Indecision. The two. So the two that we saw on Monday, upside down, about taking action. You've been thinking about it, but now you just don't know which way. Come Thursday, something's happened, and you're thinking about this. Going back to that number two, the number two itself resonates with the vibration of balance and harmony. It relates to partnerships and relationships also with faith and intuition and insight and trusting your own divine life purpose and, and the direction you're going in. But what do we see here? We see that we're unsure. We're unsure about where we're going. We may be lacking the courage and the faith to trust the process. We, we could see that deep down some in our subconscious, we want to move on we want to move forward but we are not very clear but come Thursday we've been thinking about it but as you can see at any moment you know you could literally get out of your head by dropping these swords and removing the bandage but there's still so much feelings and there is some issue still pending we see the rocks in the water and we see that the moon Deep inside, we, we ourselves are unsure. We don't have enough light to guide us to these decisions. So when it comes to love, it could possibly be that we have failed to maintain that balance in the relationship. Maybe when it comes to work, maybe that you're stuck. You're stuck in making that, that call, that decision, something that you need to do, whether, whether it has to do with a project or if it has to do with a business deal that you're trying to put through, you're uncertain about that. And you're also even uncertain on where to seek that mentorship that you need that might help you make that decision for the long-term success. This could also be related that you're thinking about relocating, you're thinking about moving, you're thinking about, you know, a, a different career path or a different opportunity that may have shown and you're not sure now. Point is, is that the truth about the situation is facing it on. And even with the finances, it looks like you need to make a, a decision about something in regards to money. Something you need to make about a purchase or an investment, and you're not sure what to do. And so the thing is, is that avoiding making the decision is not going to make it any different. At some point, that decision will need to be made or not made. And either way, it's on you the making of that decision. The responsibility and the onus still falls on you. Did you make that choice? Did you not? Was it the right one? Mm -hmm. Things. Thursday, definitely. What a conundrum. All right, let's look at Friday. Oof. Eh, it went from the, from the undecided to like, whoa. It's even worse. So let's take a look at what we see here. With the number eight swords associated with the air element trying to make decisions our air elements being libra aquarius and gemini and so we have this air influence in here and now with the number eight which is giving us the vibration of personal power self-confidence and being able to execute and have you know the freedom to do that in abundance and success and manifesting and inner wisdom but what's happening that is impossible when we are binded binded not only with our sight but with our own body we are binded and mentally we can't take action because mentally we are stuck in that place so friday some of the things have come up something has influenced 
some certain actions, yet we are not able to let go. We are in our heads with this situation and we can't move. We're feeling like we're binded in this and, and it's just like a loop replaying itself in the head. So be very careful what is, what's your, what's the real in your head. Be very careful of what's that movie playing itself out and how can you take that and, and try on Friday when you have this presented to you is really look at the day in a way as if you were giving this person, which is yourself, advice. What would you tell this person? How would you get out of it? Think about that. Many times we're quick to give someone advice, but what about giving ourselves advice? So pretend that you're talking to one of your friends who has this problem and give them the advice and listen to what you are bringing to the table. But here with this situation, it's hard to reach out and balance our life and draw on with what this beautiful number eight is bringing into your space because you can't see and you can't move. And why? Because you've got too much stuff in your head. It's almost as if the money consciousness, the love consciousness, the manifesting consciousness have moved out and all you have are all these negative Nellies. Remove the Nellies out and to input the story you want to see in the near future. And ultimately, it's as if you've given someone else power over your decisions, someone else power over your affairs. But where is your personal power to affect the change you need? to remove yourself from these binds, to get past these barriers and get to this place of celebration, which isn't too far off. So now you've come away from that as you, inside of you, there was a seed of wanting to kind of break free from an old pattern. And, and there was, there's this glimpse of, yes, it can be done, but something has transpired and really beat you down. So maybe in love, you're feeling trapped, you know, and, and it's like, what is your role in this relationship or in your pursuit for love? And when it comes to career and business and job, you know, do you feel that you can't change your career? You can't change the career path. And the question is, is it something holding you back? Do you feel you can't make that change? And that you really depend on this job because there isn't another one. Even though you look at the want ads and there's many of them. You might consider as a way out to try something on a part-time basis. If you have the energy and the desire to pursue something. The best that can happen is you make extra money. And so when we look at now in the area of money, there, these swords are in the air sign. And it's all about the mind. So what is your money mindset? Do you have some worries about money right now? And maybe you don't see the opportunities that you feel in your heart are there, but you don't see them because the blinders are on. They've been put on there and you can't see them. It's just that you've been overthinking the situation. Let's look at Saturday. Maybe we have something better on Saturday. Mm -mm, the Wheel of Fortune Upside Down. Let's look at this card right side up and then we'll bring it back. We see the number 10 here. Then we see these images on the four corners. There's lots of opportunities of expansion of knowledge and wisdom, incredible wisdom. We see the Sphinx here with the sword that can yield, wield this. We see the serpent. Okay. And then we see all these other figures here. And then we see it ready to spin. With the number 10, we're carrying two numbers. Okay. With the number 10, we have the number one and the zero. So, so here to create the number 10, we require two digits, the one and the zero. The one we see as what? The beginning. And here, it's about self-initiative, self-assertiveness, confidence, those new beginnings, reminding us that we create our own realities. 
And when we think about zero, it's the number of its eternal creation. The boundless... And then when we look at the number zero, that is the boundless universal energy of full potentiality. And then combined with the number 10, here it's about getting insights, but something is blocking. Remember, this is upside down. So now that it is being blocked, we're not getting these insights. We're not opening up to seeing the possibilities, to seeing the positive things that are there for us to take action. And so we're refusing to move forward. This is a choice that we are making. So come Saturday, there's going to be a situation where we could... So Saturday, there's going to be a situation for us to make a choice, for us to move forward with something. But we're refusing to open up those inner urgings, to open up to the faith and believing that there is a divine plan and that we are part of that plan. And so we're somewhat still blocked. And when we think of wheels of fortune, wheel of fortune, hey, fortune forecast. <laughs> well, when we think of this particular situation, when we think of a wheel of fortune, we think about, hey, luck is on our side. But what happened to your wheel of fortune here? What happened? What is your mindset? And why? What it seems like you've had a few bad things happen, a few bad events that just it's like one after the other. And you're like, where's my lucky break? The most important thing as you're moving forward and getting through Saturday is to look at what is at the illusion here. Do you really think you have control? It is when we surrender and allow things to fall and then work with what's in front of us in the highest possible way that we begin to let go and allow, allow the universe to provide us with the path, to provide us with the lessons, to provide us with the resources, to provide us with the love, to provide us with the abundance. We just need to show up with the right mindset to bring it all in and to use it for the highest good, to be a part of this whole beautiful experience called life. So could this be in love? What is affecting the relationship? There is something uh, it seems there's a, there's a struggle this week we're seeing with this relationship. It's something outside out of your control. And so in this relationship, something outside of you is also affecting this situation. So as you look at this, embrace that sometimes, no matter how you push and how possessive you might want to be or how much you might want to control this, there's sometimes something out out of your control that's moving things in a different direction and when we look at you know career and business what do we see here could be that right now there's just a feeling that this is not your ultimate destination where you're working at is not the ultimate place where you're going to feel that you are of maximum service that you are employing all of your resources and your capacity to be of greater service and possibly your full potential and so this is probably making it difficult for you to kind of feel actualized at work. And what about finances? Well, with this Wheel of Fortune, there may be an unexpected event that may happen That's that you're going to just have to, you know, take that money that you were saving aside for something else and now allocate it into the situation that showed up. And so this is just, you know, kind of reminding you that it is always good to be prepared, to have a little nest egg, not just to realize that if you're going to invest something, is are you investing your nest egg? Or are you investing money that, hey, that's okay. I'm not going to be needing it right now because you've planned it that way. Think about that too. So there's a lot of messages here about relationships and money and work. Let's take a look at Sunday. Do we have any? Thing good here so let's take a look at this card and let's just look at the imagery first so what we see here well we see some ugly dude that uh, forgot to put his shirt on and these two people are just hedonist and they're enjoying their t life and why do I'm saying enjoying well if they didn't want to be there they would just take their free hands lift those chains off and go on 
And this guy here, he is pointing to the heavens and saying, you both bozos, you know, I'm going to need to bring you some light here because you guys can't see. So this guy here has a job. His job is to kind of watch over these people and kind of in a way let them remind him that, hey, I'm supposed to babysit you, but you see where my hand's pointing? He is now raising his right hand and bringing forth energy from the heavens and lighting up the torch so that these guys can have some idea of their misdoings and shenanigans. But he is not binding them. He's overseeing. He has a job. But these, they're free to do as they please. When we look at the number 15, we see a couple things here. With the number 15, we have the vibrations of the number 1 and 5. And remember, I'm going to mention the number 1 again because it's about new beginnings. It's about asserting yourself. It's about success. But this card is upside down. We see a lot of areas here where the card's upside down. And we see for this week of the 21st through the 27th that there's going to be a lot of life lessons to deal with. Things that may change our path as we make these decisions. So if we choose. Now the question is when we see that are we going to take that action? What is or What are we going to do? And then with the number five, it's about choices. So the number five has that energy of choices, which we see it being revealed here. Interesting, right? And that's interesting that this star is a five-pointed star being upside down as we normally know that this star is usually with the point up. But right now, there is, we're having a hard time making the choices that we need to do so that we can move forward. And so instead of doing things the way that we could be doing it, we are somehow feeling a sense that we have no control over the choices that we're going to make. And so the number five is also about important changes and adapting and resourcefulness. So as we see this, there's a certain situation that is being affected by some of the lack of decisions that are not being made. We're avoiding them. So then let's take a look at the other situation that we see here with that number 15. The number 15 itself, when we piece it back, and with the number 15, we can bring it down to its base number, which is the number 6. The number 6 has the vibrations of, and I've mentioned this before, unconditional love. It's about harmony. So something is off. Something is not in harmony whether it's in the personal relationship, in the work relationship, in the family, in the community, in whatever it is that you're right now most impressed doing, this energy here is not working. This, there is, there is no unconditional love, probably because you are lacking that self-love for yourself. And so it's hard for you to give that to others to forgive yourself, to let go of past things that are no longer serving you, past thoughts that are just trying to replicate some loopy story that wasn't healthy for you. With the number six also comes problem solving. And so this problem, this situation, we can't even solve it because we can't make the decision. See, it's upside down. So one of the things that we need to work on on Sunday is probably look at how to balance the sheet, whether it's the love, the career, or the bank sheet. We need to figure out balance in our life, restore that balance in our life. And sticking back with the number 15, and 15 relates to now our thinking and encouraging us to have no fear about life, about the future, about those changes, but it's upside down. The message that the 15 wants to bring is, hey, make sure that you're farming your thoughts You've got to make sure that in your garden, your thoughts are empowering. Your thoughts are uplifting. Your thoughts are high octane. And that's what you need to think of when you see the number 15 anywhere. It's about have no fear about the changes that are coming. 
the number one for new starts, the five for change, and the unconditional love that is embodied in the six, the one and the five. So, woof. So let's keep in mind that if you're dealing with something, and let's talk about some of the darker things and addiction, whether it's substance abuse, food abuse, sex abuse, overwork abuse, there's so many ways that we're addicted to things. You know, if you look at it, there are some things that bind us and keep us here heavy. So if that is something that you are dealing with, I don't envy your situation because that is tough. But again, it's a choice. Where do you see yourself three months from now, three years from now, five years from now? And if you are still where you find yourself that you were a year ago, where you want it to be a different place, that might have been more conducive to a grander lifestyle, a happier lifestyle, a healthier lifestyle. All you need to do is ask, how could you have used a new habit to replace those moments? But this showing up is a good thing. On Sunday, you are coming to terms with what some people call the shadow self, the part of you that's saying, hey, hey, time to break free. You are seeing it. You know, many times when there is a problem, we can't fix it because we don't acknowledge it. And maybe now you're acknowledging the situation and that you can break free from a controlling relationship, that you can be more accountable with your career path and empower yourself with more skills or that you can break free from bad financial habits and become independent and become stable with your finances by managing money and having a healthy relationship with money. So Sunday is a good day. The devil upside down is beginning to show us that we are about to break free from things that bind us. But when it's upside down, the light is now up and we're ready to remove the chains from our head and move on. So there is hope. Sunday, guess what? Good day. All right, let's move over to our next section. Guess what? Angels and demons. Okay, let's see what we have here. Our angels and demons. You know, that little cartoon where, oh, you know, the angels whispering, do this, do this. And then the little demons saying, oh, do that, do that. Let's see which way you're going to go and what is going to be revealed. Demons. Angels. Hmm. The seven showing us the chariot okay so the work ahead by choosing the chariot is about so the work ahead is pretty intense because Rome was not built in one day and with the number seven it's asking the angels asking you have a lot of spiritual work that you need to do. The number seven resonates with the vibration of the collective consciousness about faith and spirituality. It is about accepting this development and this journey. It's about manifesting and ma manifestation and has to do with inner wisdom and psychic abilities, meaning embracing all sides of you. I am sure that some people are afraid to recognize their full divine being, essence of a greater creator. Essence is within each one of us to cultivate, to open up to, to commune with. So here the chariot is showing with the angels, are you going to start working on this and so that you can move in this direction? But at the same time, there is a sense that possibly you want to run forward into something that might require a little time. And this is, while it's upside down, the angels are asking you to embrace this, the work that's in here. Sometimes we want to project that it's other situations, but the work starts with us. And possibly what we're seeing right now is that 
there are parts of us that we need to control. Remember, it's upside down. Take a look at the picture here. You have the number seven. We talked about that. Then you have, it looks like a cow and an oxen. We have the yin and the yang, the night and day. We've got these things trying to balance as we're trying to move forward. At the same time, we also have, you see that? It looks like a little crab. And we associate the crab with the water sign, right? Kind of, we need to come in tune and own our feelings. And so that sense is there and all the stars guiding us, um, that's that sense. So coming into play with this, there is possibly some feelings that we need to kind of come in tune and balance out, you know, this, our willpower to, to initiate and, and realize that action starts with us. There must be also on our part as creators and manifester where we plan, we write out, we consult, we move on. But there's a moment when all the planning is done, when all the dreaming is done, we get out and we do. So this is what the number seven is asking to connect back to your true self, your authentic self and get direction over your life. Are you willing to do that? It is inviting you to do that for love, for purpose, and for the financial acquisitions that you can gain. Because with the number seven, through the seven, we've crossed over to from unconditional love and moved on to spiritual enlightenment, to thoughtfulness, to also someone that can handle and withstand hard times. And welcome good fortune because, you know, opportunity meets those that are there in the battle. So, let's take a look at demons. With Princess of Wands, which in your traditional Rider Waite deck is the Page of Wands, we have this sense here. It's funny because it's in... We have this as the demon card, and there's fire here already. And this person is trying to reach the sky as we have this little flower sign coming through. The tiger here is trying to tell you that you need to live to your full potential. And so when we see this message, it is about more of that personal ego moving forward. Will we step forward? Are we going to, even though... This may be more ego-based on a lower level, on a mundane level. It is asking us, hey, go ahead, move forward. Don't worry about yourself itself. Don't. It's not asking you to address your inner battles. It's just about like, hey, take, take a look at what's happening and just get out there. And with the Princess of Wands, we are being reminded here that there may be some conflicting messages here. Maybe there are some things that are not quite clear, but you're ready to make a move. You're ready to make a move. At the same time, there are some inner battles, something inside of you that you're still fighting and you, for some reason, can't even get out to express all of it. And you're not ready yet to move forward with that, but you would rather kind of put that part aside and just move forward. You could move forward and try to summon whatever courage you have. So the demon is saying, whatever it is, go do it. Go and face what's out here in the external world. Conquer the obstacles. Get out there and deal with that relationship. Deal with that job. Deal with you know, the money issue. But the only thing, the only way is if you can summon that inner fire and that courage to do it. So when we look at these two cards, it's interesting that the chariot is from the major arcana. It is upside down. It's telling you that before you can have the big results you want, you're going to have to deal with some internal cleaning up. There's going to, you're going to have to deal with your shadow self first. Our demon card is saying, hey, get out there, 
Go deal with the problems of the world. Get out there. Forget about your inner journey. Right now, let's conquer these things because you can. We can wake up our inner fire and the eye of the tiger and get out there and do things. So the question, again, which one will it be? Work on ourselves. Work on the shadow side of ourselves. Work on the things that eventually can help us conquer many things. Or deal with things as they're appearing and just tackle on the world. And summon the eye of the tiger and the fire within. And just conquer this situation. Interesting. All right, let's move on now to our elements of the zodiac. So we will do that next. Okay, let's put out the players. Okay, our fire sign, water sign, earth sign, and air sign. Fire. Interesting. The king of wands, which is wands are in the fire sign. So let's take a look at the king for our fire signs. Those are our Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. And so we see this king here in his kingdom. I usually associate the kings with the number 13, lucky 13, because it's my son's birthday number. And so when we take the one and the three, we have good energies of the attributes of the number one, which is those new beginnings moving forward in progress and individuality. Then we have the number three represented by optimism and enthusiasm and self-expression and creativity and communication. So what we have when we combine these two numbers, then we come in with something a little bit stronger as far as organization, fair judgment. And so we have this king here where he does think about his kingdom. He does, he reigns with a very gentle and thoughtful and compassionate mindset. And reminding us with the number 13 itself that no matter what happens, there are going to be situations that are going to rise in events and upheavals and challenges, but with fairness and this wisdom and gentleness of the king of wands, we can tap into that energy as well and the number 13. So what other things that we see here also is the lion, the courage of the lion, and then we have the little gecko here. So we, we have wisdom that comes in very grounded. He is aware of everything that's happening in his kingdom when the little geckos come in and the little lizards come in to whisper in his ear what's happening. So he's ready to take action. But our fire signs... Leo, Aries, and Sagittarius, we have a situation here as we're trying to deal with some of these issues. And we see more that on Monday and Tuesday, because these are fire elements, we have a kind of trying to break through on that, how we're going to approach that. Maybe there's going to be a lack of communication in these couple days as they're presenting them. And there's going to be on Tuesday where things, you know, should be kind of more flowing. You're going to have a feeling that things are not as organized as you want. And especially if you're the one that's coordinating something, it's going to be kind of feeling that you're trying to kind of, you know, what do they call that? Herd cats. So a lot of uh, things are going to be out of place. And that feeling is coming through with the king upside down. So approaching this from this standpoint, um, it could also feel that um, on Monday and Tuesday, you're somewhat disappointed. Disappointed because, you know, you had some things you really wanted to do. You wanted to hit some project deadlines, some goals that you wanted to pursue. And unfortunately, things are not falling through the way that you wanted. And you know how kings are, no matter how um, grand they may be. As you approach these situations that are showing up on Monday and Tuesday, try to have a little humbleness to how you, you know, deal with these situations and not come in with, you know, overblown arrogance. And and also with that, be gentle in your speech. You might find that you might get 
further along the way. You approach these things because the situation is going to, you know, be there and it might bring out not the best side of you. You know, maybe you might come in and being a little bit, you know, bossy, a little bit pushy. And maybe in the relationship, you know, you want your way and you kind of are trying to kind of impose that on this other person. Be a little bit careful on how you approach this situation coming in. So as strong and wonderful and magnanimous, you know, my fire signs are equally. You can be total, the total opposite if there is a situation that you are not in control of. For the most part, there looks like there's some stuff that is going to be out of your control. We see this happening not only on Monday, but then we see that on Wednesday and then come on Saturday. On Sunday, things seem to kind of you begin to regain your nature and be are able to kind of see things from a perspective that, hey, I am in control. But until then, you know, we see this situation, the way that you are approaching this, be very careful that you don't turn over your power to someone else, whether it's your heart, your money, or in business. And it is time uh, when it comes to finances in general, very critical week that you seriously take charge over your finances and persevere over your goals if you've set them. Don't let anything send you astray. Water. Just looking at this card, what do we see? We see suffering, cold not having the best things in life. We see packing, moving forward, some illness or impediment. They're passing through what it appears to be uh, a house of worship with the stained glass here represented by the pentacles. And the number five, the number five resonates with personal freedom, with life lessons, with letting go and not being attached to things, with travel, and also with surrender. So when we see this here, we see a situation of all of these being explained, that something is happening in your life right now for my water signs, my Cancer, Scorpion, Pisces, that is ushering a life lesson for you and this life's lesson is also creating change in the way that things used to be it's like that that is so far away like you're so far away from how things used to be because of this situation that happened and as we're looking at this that this situation that is showing up on the week of november 21 through the 27 is literally going to be a big game changer for you in far as far as money business love not so much for the water signs this is not so much about love and relationship as much as it is about finances career and relocating or moving so this week is going to be intense and try to make some decisions about your future whether it's your future job your career or a home or having to move so this is so much different for our water signs interesting lots of things that are going to be showing up for the waters lots of things for them okay then let's look at earth sign okay earth sign with our earth signs our Capricorns Taurus and Virgos so earth signs there's something great uh, for you that is going to be emotional. This is going to be a very emotional and personal week for you. Um, and we see this here as this hand is coming from above, from the clouds, is being offered this chalice, this chalice of spirituality, of abundance, and it's touching the four areas. You know, it's like it's bringing you some solid foundation emotionally. It's bringing a very solid message something really important that is coming from a higher and divine place and we see that for our earth signs capricorn taurus and virgo when we look at number one 
The number one resonates with the vibrations of new beginnings. Could this be a new relationship? What's happening here is to open up a new relationship. It could be a new relationship in intimacy or a new relationship in a partnership. There's a lot trying to form itself when it comes to this new thing that's going to show up, but it's going to require organization. The number one resonates with new beginnings, with creation, with independence, with all these positive attributes, with authority also, happiness and fulfillment, and creating your own realities. You're on that journey, and it's you creating these realities. The thing is, is that there's something working from above, bringing that message to you, to let, reminding you that happiness starts with you. You need to seek that happiness. These moments that you might come across during the week of insecurity, tap into that fountain within you that is being offered to you to bring you that peace and love and happiness. So while these things may show up during the week, for the earth signs, this is a reconnection. This could be a new romance. Or if you are in a relationship, now it's the next level. And creating more intimacy and more connection. And if this is your career, this could mean that you are now in a place where you can offer I your ideas and how you feel about certain projects and different directions that things are going. And people are valuing these your input. And financially, looks like you might get a hand, a help here that might give you a news. So there might be some good news when it comes to money for you. So definitely, you know what? My earth signs, this is not a major obstacle as you're going to be working with a lot of these opportunities and you're going to be uh, doing breakthroughs through this situation. Let's take a look at our air signs. Huh, air signs. Okay, air signs, here we go. Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. All right. And with the number 10, let's look at this beautiful imagery. We start off by seeing this beautiful number 10. We see family. We see loyalty here with our little dogs and pets. We see an elder person sitting here looking at his family, looking at his courtyard here. We see a couple here, a child. We see raining money all day long. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Okay, would you like that, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius? Receive it. So as we're standing here, we're looking at with the number one, we see the energies of those new beginnings. And we also see the energy of the universal energy, the force that permeates through everything, its existence, the eternal everything. And so combined together, we are seeing that through your ideas, we see his, this person is very contemplative, we see that our thoughts are creating things, our reality and our dreams are coming true. And we can somehow sense that we are becoming better at understanding uh, and trusting our intuition. And we feel like right now, that these situations that are presenting themselves, in the end, we see that we are in control and that we are creating that path for ourselves, that we are not waiting for others to you know, make the path for us. We are on the path and we see where the shortcomings are and we see where the strengths are and we are making that choice. We are making the choices that we need to move in the direction that we need to move. So. We have that here with the number 10 and showing that. So lots of blessings for our air signs. So definitely as we're in the season here, relax, sit back, enjoy, you know, the ba the blessings that are coming your way. And we see that finance and abundance is flowing to you, coming to you and receive that abundance there right now. The struggle is not there. And let's enjoy family. Let's enjoy the bounty. Let's enjoy our friends. In relationship, it seems that both the couple here, this unit, this business relationship, this family relationship, this couple is well off and there's no financial struggle. And here with our career, when we think about career, we are cre we're are we're feeling really comfortable with this career. We can create long-term plans with this. And financially, we are definitely 
um, receiving this windfall of money, receiving this inheritance, receiving this extra money, this bonus that is coming in. And so overall, wowsy wowsy to my air signs. So definitely the winners here for the for this week are the earth signs and the air signs are going to have an incredible week while we see that the fire signs and the water signs are going to be going through what I call a lesson. Should they choose which one? That's on you, right? All right. Now let's go through the subscriber community question for the week. All right. If you are interested in having a mini reading here on the channel, please do put the question on this uh, video and I will try and pull it and showcase it in one of the next sessions. All right. So let's get this moving here. And the subscriber community question for this week is, what do angels need me to know? What do angels need me to know? Okay. Okay, let's see our third card. Reveal. Okay, the Eight of Swords. So interesting how we had the in this Eight of Swords show up earlier. And so the angels need you to know that you are blocking the flow, that you are too busy and worried with too many things that are irrelevant, that are keeping you binded and trapped within this that you have created, that the world that you have created is of your mental making. And so until you begin to remove these debilitating and depowering thoughts, you will not be able to be free. The work has to come from you to cut and remove the, the bind that you have. You need to remove these thoughts and replace them with higher vibration thoughts. So let's see. Well, look what we have here. The Six of Swords interesting when we replace those dark negative thoughts with positive new ones we can now move forward we can move on we can go to that promised land all these promises that we are making to ourselves now we can see them clearly because the blind is off isn't that cool look at that and remember Six has the vibration and energy of unconditional love and balance and harmony. So when we begin to not only love ourselves, but also see that and give that lo unconditional love to not only others, but also to the situations that our show up, to the situations that is showing up for us in our lives. And if we see these situations with unconditional love, and see that for the life lesson that it can give us and release any negative sensation to it that it's trying to keep us tied down, that it's trying to uh, see us, you know, unhappy. No, but just see, hey, this is good. I'm going to take the test. I'm going to pass. And we see the number six here that it is one to help us solve this situation because the number six is also problem solving and brings on and ushers and resonates with stability in life. So what does your angel want you to know? To keep balance between your goals, your material life, and your spiritual and inner journey. Find that balance so you can move forward. And the final outcome? Ha! Ah, the Nine of Cups. Remember, nine is six, right side up. The Nine of Cups universal love, 
you've mastered this unconditional love for yourself and others for the situations that show up in your life you now are embracing universal love you are embracing faith you are working with the universal spiritual laws and you are flowing you are working with light and I have become a light worker bringing beauty and love and positivity into dark places with unconditional love and now allowing universal love to flow through you so beautiful here the final the final message here what your angels want you to know is that your life path here involves service and you have the skills to be of service and to shed this light and love into the world ultimately the message from your angel is stop the negative thinking you need to release yourself from those old debilitating thoughts and replace them with positive uplifting visions of where you want to see yourself and where you want to be and ultimately what will be there is universal love for all the light is going to flow through you the ability to share love and give love will be there and that understand that you have a purpose and as you give yourself in service and un and connect with your natural skills and talents you will find that you will be there where you're needed the most keep those thoughts vibrating high all right there you have it let's move on now to our next section We are now moving on to the numerology section of the Comprehensive Collective Reading for the week of November 21st through the 27th. Twelve. Wow, six and six. Awesome. All right, let's look at this from the ascending order. So the number 12 itself has the two base numbers of 1 and 2. And here we are, the month of gratitude, happy Thanksgiving to all. And when we look at this number 1, it is resonates with the vibrations of those new beginnings, creation, uniqueness, that beginning of love and inspiration, that creating our own realities. Then when we look at the number two, we move on to the next step, balance, adapting, diplomacy, because we're negotiating now with others and looking at new elements. We're about partnerships and relationships. We're about our intuitions and moving towards our divine life purpose. Then we take the number 12 and then take it down to its core number itself, one plus two two is three. The number three carries on with it the vibration of communication, self-expression, growth, abundance, manifesting. And so we have that here. And so as we look at this message that's been coming through with all these situations, the importance of communicating at the same time, that need and desire to continue to expand and grow and to move on. We see all that kind of being influenced into this number. But then let's look at how we also see how this number 12, particularly for this week's reading, is asking us for balance, balance with our past, balance into our future. What does that look like with what we're looking at the number six looking back and the number six looking forward. The number six itself has the vibrations and the energy of unconditional love and harmony. We saw this here in the number two that's embedded in that number 12. And we also, whatever situation is happening during the week, it is asking us that we look towards the past and moving into the future, not only ourselves, but the people around us and the situations to see it with unconditional love, to bring balance and harmony to the situations, to seek peace in what we do so that we can expand and to 
the number six into the past and into the future is bringing this energy of problem solving, looking at it from a kind of that person that wants to finish a puzzle and to see how we can get to that solution. The past is being addressed by how we fix it in the future and find that balance. The future will fix itself on how we address the present. So as we seek that balance, we bring it into the future and we allow the past to heal itself with that type of approach with bringing peacefulness, harmony, and balance. So what do we have here when we see this full number, the number 12? The number 12 has the energy and the vibration of cycles of experience, of regeneration with consciousness. It holds the wisdom of what we see and what we have learned along the way. And we're bringing this number here and this energy by bringing all that knowledge, all that wisdom, all that unconditional love, it is asking us not to be hindered or caught up with old habits, to focus on the things that we can modify in a positive way to allow us to grow into the new experiences and the higher selves that we aim to be. And this way, we can achieve and aspire to greater and lofty goals. So definitely, when we look at our angels and demons, we get to figure out which way are we going to go as we move forward. And the question is, which one will you choose in the end? And there we have it. All right, my darlings, here we are with our meditation section. I'm going to ring the bell twice. And that is to give you a chance, if you would like, to close your eyes and allow yourselves time to kind of go into yourself, reflect, and whatever you want to do in this one minute of space. Close your eyes and rest. Close your eyes and observe your breath. Close your eyes and look at the images in the back of your eyelids. Close your eyes and just push away the thoughts as if they were balloons and come back to a sense of peace and gratitude. So the second time that you hear the bell, that means that the minute is up. All right. All right, take a deep breath, and here you are, feeling what? Mm -hmm, Delicious. Okay, let's move on now to our affirmation for the week. You could take this affirmation, and it's like, you know, a boost, and put it in your phone, put it in a three by five card, put it on your desktop, put it on a little piece of paper, and just carry it with you. If anybody wants to knock you off your game, Bring this back. You are in control. So here's the affirmation for this week. I will say it twice. One, so you can hear it. And the second time, so you can say it out loud with me. All the good in my life comes to me as a result of my willingness to find happiness in each moment. All the good in my life comes to me as a result of my willingness to find happiness in each moment. 
All right, there you have it. Hopefully something here is going to help you, empower you, give you something to see clearer through the cobwebs and maybe think, yeah, that might work, this might not. And if it helps you get through your week and give you a little boost, then I have done my part in making this a better place for all of us. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave me your comments and hit the bell. That way you'll get notified when I put up my next video. So until then, be blessed.